Welcome to the Smart Travel Family YouTube channel and a short piece about the Trail San Miguel de Abona, an annual run in the Canary Islands you know, on Tenerife. The trail itself is 13.8 kilometers long. It's a circular trail, so you start and end at the same location. The beginning is in a village or township called Aldea Blanca in the south of Tenerife. I hope that you can hear me over the background. Uh, master of ceremony, but the uh, run itself uh, starts roughly 200 meters above sea level and the maximum height is 580 uh, meters above sea level and the total vertical climb is 574 meters. Cinco, cuatro, tres, dos, uno, First kilometer of the trail, a bit more ups than downs, but very pleasant. I'm about middle of the pack, there are people behind me, but I think that the front runners are at least seven, eight hundred meters ahead of me. So there are ser some people in seriously top shape. Second kilometer of the run, definitely many more downhills than uphills. So if you've got those long legs or good technique, use it to gain some ground because of course it will get yeah you can see it goes only uphill from here also sweat is killing me do invest in one of those head sweat bands or something I would appreciate that so much right now plane in the distance I'm going to the Tenerife South Airport two and a half kilometers almost kilometer three I've been walking for the past 200-300 meters heart rate solidly in zone 5 hope for some more flatter terrain yeah, I was just coming up and looking forward to that watering station at kilometer 4 but the scenery look at the scenery just beautiful kilometer 4 if 3 was up 4 is mostly down I'm happy that I worked on those downhills but I wish I would have done much more of zone five, 5 training otherwise those climbs are gonna kill me there is one coming up I'll be dead there yep as expected 4.2 kilometers <laughs> and rarely anyone's running first watering, watering run okay need to leave the watering run but really freshen me up, can do some more running. Crossing also the first road, four and a half kilometers. Oh my God, 5.7 kilometers. <laughs> Another crazy climb. Already in the previous one, five minutes ago, my heart rate was around 177. Wow, <laughs> this is a killer. But I hope actually the vertical climbs will be soon over. Because I think we will be close to 400 vertical meters soon of climbing. So hopefully it's more downhill there. Kilometer 5, 360 panorama. End of the running trail is there. People still coming up. Hardly anyone running. But this is a tough climb. My favorite running buddy. Excellent music. Started with the sun, red hot chili peppers at the start. We're about the same pace. If you fancy music, this is also a way how to do it. That's some fancy house up there. Again, some drops at 5.2 kilometers. Enjoy them while they last. I really start liking how the trail is set up. One kilometer is climbing. Now we're at the start of kilometer seven and it's downhill or slight uphill slope really pleasant run now as you get more tired though watch out really that you don't slip there are rocks like this and if you slip on one then the bruises might be quite nasty and the closest aid personnel is probably one kilometer or more each way start of kilometer eight running in some beautiful it seems to be like i don't know countryside farm nice road 
EP seven and a half kilometers and the second watering station, thank God. Ah, feeling much better. Had a mini shower. Thank you for the kind lady that did it. Can run a bit more now. Pulse is down to 156. So I probably have about 300 meters before if there's another climb back to walking. This is just lovely. After the second watering station, you are going through a local, it looks like a traditional village. Yeah. Appreciate the architecture. Kilometer eight. Almost didn't notice that it's already past half distance. Kilometer ago, nice. Very beautiful scenery to celebrate it. Oh, this is the <laughs> trickiest part of the track. You have to try and climb over some rocks. And what I just went through. But really, one of the most unique tracks that I've ever run. People also cheering us up. Viva España! Close to kilometer 10 of the run. We are in some town. Hold on to our pants. Crazy descent. Start of kilometer 12. So three more to go. I didn't make a video of the last watering station, but most people just passed it by because the end is so near. Seems that the end of the trail is mostly downhill, but it presents its own difficulties because my ribs are really starting to hurt. I hope I will be able to finish running. <laughs> Look at that. End of kilometer 12, start of kilometer 13. I had to pause and let myself and you take this in. A small, really nice canyon. Okay, that's it. Last two kilometers, let's go. One and a half kilometers to go. The town of Aldea Blanca down below. And where you see that light there, that's the finish line. Last 800 meters, start of kilometer 14. I know I mentioned that you shouldn't let down your guard at the seventh kilometer, but this really applies to the last three, two and a half kilometers of the trail. There it's so, it's downhill and the surface is so rocky. It's super easy to slip and hurt yourself. Yes, approaching the finish line. Okay, the post-run party is starting. I came in at one hour and 33 minutes, roughly. There are about, I don't know, probably one quarter, one third of runners that still have to finish. Uh, let's go and check out the refreshments. Water, some chips. Just in case if you are planning to compete for top spots, my wife told me that the first men came in at around one hour mark and the first woman came in at one hour and six minutes. So despite the terrain, we would have to uh, have a speed of on average 13 kilometers or 14 kilometers per hour. That is pretty crazy because the ascents at times were unbearable. Took a look at what my Garmin watch says. Four days of recovery sounds about right. So a brief recap after the run. Uh, was it worth it? Definitely. Uh, if you are in the Canary Islands, definitely take uh, part in this or similar runs. The experience is itself very nice. And of course, the terrain is always fascinating. As I am coming from a country that's mostly flat, our highest mountain is 314 meters. Then I usually don't take any uh, water or drinks or to distances less than 15 kilometers, but it probably was a mistake in this run. I probably should have gotten at least one of those half a liter soft bottles from Decathlon. And as I already mentioned at least twice during the run, uh, something to take care of the sweat. Sweat was a real problem, especially for people with glasses. There are some runners that are carrying their hydration with them. I'm not really sure if it's necessary for this run. If you are used to it, of course, do do it. But if you are not used to it, it would, would probably be just extra weight. I hope you found the video interesting. Uh, thank you for supporting the channel by pressing those like and subscribe buttons. And we'll see you next time.